Welcome, I'm Danny Walker. Today we're talking all about the interview competition for Miss Universe Philippines 2023. Thanks for clicking on this episode. If you enjoy content like this, please consider supporting the channel by subscribing, sharing it with a friend. You can also hit that super thanks button or join memberships if you would like exclusive access to extended versions of this episode and many others. For this competition, each of the contestants were asked the same questions three of which were from the organization and the other two questions were from the pageant's sponsors. So I'm gonna share with you those five questions first and then we'll talk about each of their answers. The first question they got asked was, what is something interesting about you? Which by the way is essentially the same thing as what makes you special, tell us about yourself. The answer to this question is really the answer to those questions as well. Just an extra tip if you're preparing for a competition Next, they asked them, what makes someone influential in this day and age amidst the shallow social media noise? They asked, how do you balance cultural and traditional values with modern day aspirations? And what advice would you give to other Filipinas navigating this challenge? Then one of the sponsors asked, as a Miss Universe Philippines delegate, what does the national gem, the South Sea Pearl, represent to you? And the other sponsor asked, how important do you think it is to support and promote locally made products like Smiley, which is the name of the sponsor, in the Philippines? I'm gonna share these in no particular order, and then I'm gonna save my favorite interview for last. Cavite. Wow, I have not seen her interview before, and I was very, very impressed by this interview. Obviously, we know she represented the Philippines at Miss Grand International, and that's one thing, okay? But you just never know what's gonna happen in that interview room, and I was blown away. Other thing I wanna mention, she looked gorgeous in her suit. And it was interesting how that was the trend this year. Everybody really wanted to go with those suits. I, normally we see a lot more outfits here. We see a lot more of the butterfly sleeves, which I love. So I like the story that she shared about working with her parents' business and how that shaped her, how that affected her. She was also really, really smart when they asked her about the influential question. She threw in that she also has a podcast. And I was like, yes, I love that. Like throw in those little bits about yourself here and there. She was just so artistic articulate with all of her answers. And I felt like you could really see that in the question about tradition and culture. And then when they asked her about the pearl, I just like some of the points that she made. She says that the pearl is essentially immortalizing their culture. And it also allows them to compete internationally in the jewelry market. And I thought that was also really smart. I just like that she approached the question from a different perspective, a different point of view. She wasn't just talking about it, the pearl's significance culturally, but in the international business world as well, I was like, ah, oh, okay. Then she was asked the question about supporting locally made products, and she had a very practical answer for this. She talked about how supporting local products is going to help stabilize the economy in the Philippines, especially after COVID. And yes, just yes, yes to all of this. Cha Ong Kazan, she has to be my biggest surprise for interview. For me, she's been just on the edge for everything and all of the challenges. And I, I keep going like, I just want like a little bit more from her, a little bit more oomph, you know? She did it for preliminaries, all right? So first of all, looked beautiful the moment that she walked in. Oh my gosh, like, just like the hair up for her. It was a great look. Then. She talked about her goal to be purposeful and impactful. She shared that despite childhood traumas that she has been able to rise above, and that's an important quality because life will never stop giving you challenges. And boy, do I know that that is right. Huh. All right, she says, but if you do rise above, you will become a better version of yourself. Then when it comes to the tradition question, she says that we must work to incorporate tradition into our everyday lives. And then she says that the pearl is a part of the country's identity. And she says that she values the work ethic of the people who harvest the pearls. And then she talked about having the vision of a sustainable country and that we can get that 
And she says that not only are you going to be a more sustainable country, but you're also going to have job creation. You're going to make the citizens in that country a lot more successful. She did it for me with this interview. Deval Oriental, first of all, she just looked like a queen. All right, that outfit was so just, she just looked couture. She just looked like that would be an outfit you could wear to a Miss Universe interview. And not only was she just stunning in it, it had personal meaning. She wore it for a purpose. She shared a little bit about where she's from, her tribe, and really where she comes from and what they're known for. And that is the Abaca fabric. I apologize if I am not saying that correct correctly. She shared that somebody who is influential is a person with a purpose. And then she shared that her purpose, okay, was working with her local tribe. And then she talked about the outfit that she was wearing as well, the meaning behind it, and that that is a traditional fabric that she is wearing. And I just love that she was showing, hey, I'm, I'm supporting, I'm supporting everyone right now, even throughout this journey, and they support me as well. So that was really, really smart. I like that she self-described herself so we can get a better idea of who she, who she is. And that's a great interview strategy. She said that she considers herself a modern Filipina with traditional values. And when I hear a woman describe herself like that very quickly, like effortlessly, it just says to me, she knows who she is. She's not look seeking other people's approval. She is confident in the woman she is today. And then she says that her advice is to embrace your individuality, but don't forget your roots. And I just felt like that's just such a great this is a great overall message. Last thing I'll mention is her reference to advocating for livelihood and cultural preservation. She connected that very well to the question about pearls. And then she was able to reference her outfit when they asked her about supporting locally made products because she was wearing one. So she did an excellent job. This was one of my favorite interviews and she just really carried herself like a queen to gig. I don't know if you kind of noticed or felt this, but her outfit just reminded me of a different version of what Celeste wore to Miss Universe. She also wore something very reminiscent of a men's suit. So very interesting choice here. But what I like about hers is that she had the top half that looked more like a men's suit with the tie, but then the bottom half was kind of a longer skirt, but then she had a slit in it. I felt like if the outfit didn't have a slit, it would just, it would almost look costumey but i felt like the slit just made it a little more fashionable and it fit her perfectly i loved it and i was very excited for this interview because one of her big strengths is speaking and she did not disappoint another oh my gosh this would have gotten such a high score for me this interview she walks in she greets everyone and she says happy international lupus day if you didn't know you know now Great, they asked her what's interesting about herself. She talked about being a lupus warrior and her experience with that. She also said how it's helped to relate to other people who have lupus or other people who have invisible illnesses. And because she had lupus, she learned sign language and she said that I'd be happy to show you some sign language after the competition. Next, they asked her about how somebody is influential and she says that it takes vulnerability and strength to show who you are. It's the individuality and the uniqueness that we can cultivate that is used to empower other people. The way that she has with words I need to know what her interview prep is. I need to know who and if she's working with someone and we need to see a behind the scenes of this. And if not, if, it, if this is just her, then she needs to be teaching a masterclass on interviews. Listen to what she had to say about tradition and culture. She believes tradition offers wisdom of the people in our past and it's important to respect our elders to use that wisdom to guide us. However, she would like to empower modern day Filipinas to honor their truth and let that guide them towards what they are meant to do. Go towards your dreams and your goals. I just feel like she would blow everyone away in an onstage question. I need to see it. For the pearl question, she said that a pearl represents a transformational, notice how she did that, threw that in there a little bit, transformational journey amidst difficulty and hardship, and that with enough patience, strength, 
kindness, and collaboration, loved that one, that something beautiful can come from even the smallest piece of dirt. This is symbolic of making your life whatever you want it to be and that you are your own oyster. For the product question that she was asked, she was one of the few contestants who shared and offered up some advice for how we can encourage people to buy local. She said that we can do this by educating our youth and encouraging them to not import products, but to create homegrown companies that can inspire even more businesses in the future, like Smiley, which is one of the pageant sponsors. She says that this can inspire other Filipinos. And then she also wrapped everything up by saying that we have the capability of doing this because we have such innovative Filipino children. I don't even know what to tell you about this interview. It was just so impressive. Makati, the first thing that stood out about her was just her look. I loved her interview outfit. I thought she looked fantastic. The hair, beautiful, just everything about it, loved it. Now she opened by sharing that she had been fighting for her life two weeks prior to this interview. I didn't even know this. I didn't even hear anybody talk about this. She said that she was hospitalized. She just lost a lot of blood and she, but she was fighting for it. And I was just, I was blown away by that. I had no idea, but great for her. And then in terms of the question about being influential, she said that it's so important to be accountable for how we're behaving online and to always be kind because a positive comment can go a long way, but a neg negative comment can send people into tears. And I just thought that that was a really well said statement about our use of social media today and how we are influential. She said that the pearl represents every Filipino and that she's discovered something new about herself from her Miss Universe Philippines journey. And I like that. It's like this personal growth and then also talking about the growth that a pearl goes through. For the tradition and culture question, she said that she's very empowered and she says that the best way for us to or really to answer the question to balance tradition and culture is for her to lead by example through what she does. And she says that she is a Filipino who appreciates her roots, but she also breaks modern day stereotypes by wearing short hair to a pageant, something we don't always see. And then also by accepting masculine roles in her acting career. So I thought that was a pretty interesting thing to add, add on to there. And I just thought overall it was a very solid interview. Now don't forget if you're a contestant and you're preparing for a competition and you want lots of extra resources and tips, sign up for my free pageant prep course. It's linked in the description. Eastern Samar, I have to say that she is naturally just very sweet in her interviews. And I feel like that's just a nice little unique thing about her that makes her very likable. It's not really something that you can teach to people. It's just a beautiful, unique quality of her. I loved it. She was also very, very beautiful. She looked great for this interview. She talked about switching from a medical path to a business path because she is immune compromised. And she just did this in a really likable way where she was like, well, well here, here we are now though, look at me now. You know, now I'm competing for Miss Universe Philippines. So that was very likable. And then she also shared her advice for other Filipinas balancing tradition and culture with the modern world in a really beautiful way. And then when it came to the question about the pearl, she compared the pearl to the story of the Filipino. So you have to watch these interviews for yourself. The way that she shared this to me really came across so beautifully as if she were an author. It just, she just really drew me in with how she was answering her question. I do wish, however, that she smiled, smiled a little bit more. I think that if she smiled a little bit, it just would have made her look a little bit more relaxed. But she also did a great job answering the question about local local products. For me, she just, she aced this interview. She would still get one of my high scores. Martin Duque had a really interesting interview outfit to me. The shoulders were sloping a little bit. I wish they would have brought that seam in, that's just me. She talked about being an entrepreneur. She's also the co-founder of her family's business. She also said that if you're gonna be influential that you should use your platform to make positive change. And she talked about using social media to empower 
other Filipinos' talents, and you can do that by sharing your own talents on social media. And she said that we can be as beautiful as the pearl, regardless of all of our struggles. Bulacan, I'm telling you, she's been my diamond in the rough. I have loved her. She's a an amazing surprise. Now, she looked incredible, first of all, walking into the interview. I need to know who her team is, okay? Who's a part of this? Great, great, great job. She did such a wonderful job sharing about what's interesting to her. She always has a smile on her face, very genuine, very joyful. I loved that. She says that she hopes that you can watch her transform from a princess into a queen because her name is princess, okay? It was, she's great. She's always got these little slogans that she shares and I love them. They're so cute so her. Now she speaks with conviction also in her interview. And that's a, that's a great quality. It makes her come across as very genuine. She spoke pretty well for the influential question, but I don't really feel like she specifically answered the question about what really makes somebody influential, but she did a really great job wrapping everything up and talking about appreciating local brands and how they support the livelihood of Filipinos. Overall though, I feel like what it is about her, it's just her aura, it's her smile, it's everything that draws you in. And then her speaking abilities are great. She's not using too many filler words. She's speaking with confidence. So this could potentially have a really great score. Plastic has a very beautiful speaking voice and I have talked about this before. I think I mentioned this in the memberships version of my Jojo Brigai's runway challenge because I talked about her performance there. And I said that I just have been loving her throughout the competition. And to me, I think she can be a really great surprise for people. And ah, oh, fingers crossed, I hope that she is. But I really loved her look for interview. I thought that she looked so pretty here and she just had so many amazing things to say. Definitely one of my favorite interviews here. She shared in her opening that she played chess. She actually had multiple national chess championships under her belt. And she says that she believes in fake it till you make it. And that if she's being honest, that she has also experienced imposter syndrome and that sometimes she doubts herself and she doesn't feel worthy enough to stand in front of the judges and that she may not feel worthy enough enough all the time to be a Q&A mentor. And she says that sometimes she doesn't feel pretty enough to be a beauty queen, but that she knows that she is capable of making change. And that at the end of the day brings her confidence. And I was like, yes. The way that she said this was so real and honest. I felt like she was really opening up to me. And I wasn't even in the room. Great answer for how do you balance culture and tradition. She says it is just important to be a part of the conversation, whether that's in, in a public place, whether that's in society or whether that's just with your friends. She also said that we don't just want to be reflective of our society today, but to be aspirational of what we want it to be. Very profound answer here. Then in her pearl answer, she mentioned that the pearl is the only living gem. Fun fact, I didn't even realize that. And she says that it's so rare. Obviously, if it's the only one. She says that the pearl is symbolic of people's roles in life and creating and shaping change. And then when they asked her about products, she talked about how she didn't grow up in the Philippines, but when she would visit the Philippines when she was younger, she would really make an effort to support local artisans and she would very proudly take back all of the things that she purchased in the Philippines and wear them to school. And so she says, you know, supporting Filipino made products has always been something that's important to her and even more so now. Ooh, Cebu province. She's been on my edge for a lot of the challenges, but I've been loving her. The first thing about her is that she's very relaxed in her interview. That was a great quality to see. I also liked her answer about being an influential person. She says that somebody who's influential is somebody who uses their platform to maximize their influence. And that was great. For the tradition question, she said that she believes that she is quite traditional already, but I think she was one of the few contestants who actually answered the second part of that question. And she didn't focus just on like, I'm traditional, but she gave advice to other Filipinas to how to navigate that. And then she talked about 
the South Sea Pearl and sustainability. And she shared about being a mental health advocate within that answer. So that was very, very smart, very strategic. She, she did what she had to do to share things that are important about her. She just, to me, felt so ready for this interview. She said it's very important to support their local community through buying local and just overall the way that she was answering these questions i was so impressed by her just so pleasantly surprised so happy for her because she's a contestant that i just thought you know i think that you have that potential and she met that potential if not exceeded it Agusa del Norte had a solid interview. There were so many great things here. First of all, she made a wonderful first impression. Her hair, her makeup was lovely. It wasn't too heavy. It wasn't too light. I liked the outfit that she was wearing. She walked in very confidently, and I will say that the delivery of all of her answers was very confident. My feelings on this interview is that she sounded very well prepared, but she didn't go too far, and she didn't sound very rehearsed. She still came across as natural and I absolutely loved it. When they asked her about something interesting about herself, she talked about her experience with psoriasis. That was super smart, just getting right to one of her main branding points and sharing what she does with that. And in regards to the South Sea Pearl question, she did a really good job relating herself to the cultivation of a pearl and her own personal growth. One way that I would improve an interview like this though is to add in a story that would allow her to connect more with the judges. A lot of us have our own really unique personal experiences, but I think it's also important to ask yourself, what experiences do I have that I can share with the judges that's gonna allow them to relate to me? Even if they haven't had that same experience, it's gonna be your job as a contestant to demonstrate how you can relate to the judges in the room and a wider audience. Pampanga, first of all, love the outfit, okay? The fit of her blazer dress was fantastic. She looked very, very beautiful in this. I like that she opened up by sharing that she is a miracle baby, that her mother had her when she was 41 and she feels like because of that, she's been this risk taker since she almost didn't have life. She really makes the most of the life that she has. She says that we are all influential whether we're talking about a huge community maybe that you've built online, but we even if you don't have that, you are still influential in your small circle. And I think that's so important that we don't underestimate that. And so I loved that. She says that we can be influential by sharing our stories and also sharing our advocacies, yes, on social media, but also beyond social media. Then when she talked about culture and tradition, she mentioned the marriage of tradition and ever-changing times. And that was just really well said. And then when they asked her about the, the pearl, she says that the pearl is a part of their cultural heritage in the Philippines, and it symbolizes passion and not just the journey taken by one, which I think is so true. It very much relates. Like it takes a lot of people's hands to create those pearls. And then also it takes uh, a lot of people. It's kind of like it takes a village to create a queen and it really does. And then she said that it's also a symbol of the strength of Filipino people. And I really like that. And I do really think that for her interview, her smile very much helped her. She maintained that smile throughout. And I felt like it just really helped her tone. And overall, she just had such a positive attitude in the interview. That was my takeaway from it. Baguio, really, really beautiful. I fully expected her with this look. I feel like those really voluminous large waves are kind of like her signature look and I love it. She looks beautiful like that. Great suit here and just Overall, I think that she looked prepared for an interview. I like her entrance of this interview and I feel like a lot of contestants forget about that. And I really believe that the way that you enter an interview room, that really is going to set the tone for your entire interview. And I just thought that she did such an excellent job with that. It's something that you should watch if you're preparing for it for a pageant. She immediately was talking about her career. She mentioned how she has had to step up as an older daughter and help with her family. And she did all of this in a really lovely, confident, and still humble way. And then she also related the resiliency of how do we get a pearl to her own personal story. And the way that she did that, 
I thought was really great and was very memorable for me. Zimbales, she just looked so beautiful when she came in the door. Oh my goodness, she looked amazing. She also had a really unique pin on her blazer and it was apparently of her sister's. It kind of it kind of made me giggle a little bit. I've never seen anything like that. Her advice for being influential is saying that you have to take up space, but first you have to find your purpose. Figure out what it is that you're giving to others and be in service of others. She also said that she has a responsibility as someone living in a modern age to share the history of Filipinos with future generations. It didn't feel like any of her answers were very forced. I feel like she was prepared, but she just sounded so natural. And then she, she talked about the pearl being precious and incomparable. And she says that we all go through processes like the pearl goes through in order to become who we are. And, and in that way, we are like pearls. I noticed that when she was speaking, I just really felt drawn to her. I think that she was able to accomplish this through her volume and through the pacing that she had, as well as through her overall body language and how she was making eye contact with the judges. I thought it was great that she used the question when they asked her about supporting local products. She shared why that's important, but she shared that why she believes those things is because of her background in business administration. I thought that was great. Just you, you gotta find those places in the interview to share about yourself. My favorite interview, and I don't think this should come as any surprise to anyone, was Behold. I talk about this all the time. I've always just felt like her strength is her speaking ability, speaking on camera especially, and how she stays poised under pressure. Not only did, did she meet all of those standards, but this interview, it just did everything for me. It was everything. It was the right balance of being prepared, being able to demonstrate her personality, share about who she is, and then also just the way that she answered the question sounded like she's prepared for this title at her confident entrance, that's setting her up for success. Then they asked her what makes you interesting and she took a pause, she took a moment to think about that. She shared a couple things about herself there. She talked about how she is a free diver, just a few quick facts. She talked about how she's competed at Miss Universe Philippines multiple times, which many people know. But she said that the criticism that she faced from her body, that through that she, she grew and she learned to love herself more after receiving that criticism. And I was like, yes, like I love that that was the result of that hardship, that it didn't break her down, that now she's leaning more into who she is and loving herself. And that's really what we should all aspire towards. This was brilliant. They asked her about tradition and culture and what did she do? She went right into a story and that's such a great interview strategy. She says that her mom is the one that balances tradition and culture for her. And she's just said this in such, gosh, such a relatable way and such a likable way. It felt like you were just having a normal conversation with her. And she gave a very specific example of something that her mom tells her all the time. And then she talked about how pearls represent the power of personal change and progress, how it passes through many caring hands before that pearl can become its best, its shiniest, and its ultimate self. And that was just phenomenal how she related that. The way that she said it, you need to watch this interview. Then she talked about not just supporting the pro the products that Filipinos are creating, but the Filipinos behind those products. And she talked about, and she told the sponsor this, she says, oh, by the way, I reached out to someone and I hope that they're gonna be connecting with you soon. What did she just do right there in that moment? She showed us that she's already stepping into the role of a title holder. She's not waiting for things to happen. She's taking initiative for things. She's making things happen. She's creating these potential connections between you know businesses or people that she knows and the sponsors. I'm just saying that's the type of contestant that a sponsor is gonna wanna work with. Not just one that's taking, but one that's giving back. So overall, that was not only my favorite interview, but it was the best interview that I've seen of her in her Miss Universe Philippines journey. This interview for me was just undeniably 
for me, uh, the highest high score. I'm not saying it's gonna be like that for every judge. Everybody's gonna feel a little bit different, but this is at least in the top five of interview scores. That's how I felt about this one. That's it, those are my favorite top 15 interviews. Let me know what you thought of the contestants. Share with me your favorites in the comments below, and let's remember to be very supportive and encouraging of the contestants. And also don't forget to check out these other recent episodes, and of course, stay tuned for my recaps of prelims and finals. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope to see you very soon.